Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race and part three of our turbo build. Like we left off last time, we were really struggling to figure out this whole mess down here and how tight it really, really is. So I hope, I hope that I have the fix right here, an aluminum donut. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to take this thing, cut it up, maybe turn this thing into a quart, couple quarters, use a ninety, and see if I can make this little gap right here work out okay uh that needs to come down a little bit and then in a little bit but i'm kind of letting that side dictate based on this and hopefully this allows us to get there this being an aluminum donut this is about as tight as you can get for a three inch radius because this will show you right here how tight it would be if it wasn't so that little radius there is what would be that radius there so it's almost that much of a difference, but it'd probably be somewhere about in there is how much tighter we're gonna end up overall. We'll see if one of these little pieces will fit in there. The donut I got is welded all the way on the outside, but it is not welded on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld about a quarter of it and then go ahead and cut it where it's welded so then it doesn't try to spring out and come apart after it's cut. Weld it up. Due to the kind of little angle that way and the little angle that way, once this rotates back, I think something like this is gonna work pretty dang well. So I just need that little upper piece to help get it straight. And then we can use the 90 and it rolls in real good. If I had seven hands, I'd show you guys, but I'll probably get this all taped together and then I can kind of put it in there and then you guys can see what I'm talking about. Without having this flange here also, I'm still waiting on it to get shipped. I know what's gonna work, so I can at least start getting it all kind of put together there. I do have an aluminum, another aluminum V-band that I can kind of use for mock-up of like kind of tacking it and holding it in there, uh, maybe with some tape or whatever, and then I can move on from there. And then once that other flange gets here, I can make sure, and it'll be close enough that within a little grinding or a little smoothing or a little bit of adjustment, I can definitely make it work think is the piece that's going to help fix it all i tack this flange on i tack the little pie cut in there and then i have this o-ringed flange from a three inch v-bank so i thought they were three but they're not they're three and a half to the compressor they're three to that so alex just showed up what up buddy so then what i'm going to do is use this for now but originally when i was looking at turbos i ordered I was thinking I was gonna order the 1450s from Garrett, not the 1500s. Well, that changes the outlet on the compressor housing from three to three and a half. So I ordered a flange that adapts from three to three and a half. It really doesn't change anything as far as like, if you look in the turbo, it's about three. It's just the flange goes out to like that three and a half size. So I need another one of those. These aren't gonna work, but it'll work at least for now to help locate. Cause it has a little locating ring on the turbo and make sure everything lines up. And luckily, Alex showed up at the perfect time to give me a hand. <laughs> We've been messing with this thing for a little bit uh, and we got it mounted. Not perfect also because I don't have that ring, but I think we're close enough to keep moving on. So what we have here is I actually ended up going ahead and adding the mount for the intercooler. So it's mounted now and this is in there and it's up there and tight to the flange. So pretty much everything's where it needs to be. As far as location wise, this ended up tilting back a little bit more than I wanted due to the length of the flange on the cold side and all that stuff. Actually, we're gonna have plenty of room for a radiator on the inside if I want. Trying to make sure everything stayed square this way. This side definitely got closer though. So we need to lower it down. We need to take a look at it and see what we can do on this side. Looking at the other side, I think we're looking pretty good. Once I can get this to set in, we're real close to that, like pretty much lining up right into there. Straight piece in. And this side should be done as well. And then that is pretty much how everything's gonna sit right there in the bay. Intercooler in, mounted. And uh, yeah, I am thinking that looks pretty gosh dang good. And just like that, the driver's side is done. Nice little piece there. As long as our V-band that actually is supposed to go here lines up, which it should be very close because this one's inside this about halfway. I think we pretty much nailed it, dude. Nice job. One, one, one small step for Salty, one giant leap for us, because man, this has been quite the little headache situation, but I think we're past a big part of it. So uh, 
think tomorrow I'll be back to start working on the waste gates. Back over there next day and I went ahead and got started on welding all the mounts that we tacked on last night. I went ahead and welded up all the mounts under the intercooler as well. Now that that's all ready to go, I can go ahead and put that back in and then now we can work on the waste gates. Gosh dang, I think that looks super, super cool guys. I am, I am so freaking stoked with how this thing is coming out. It's tight, but everything fits so good. Looks so sick. Everything looks super, super clean. Super simple too. Well, putting it together hasn't been super, super simple, but the setup and the amount of piping and everything is so minimal, it's so nice. I'm gonna move on to trying to put the wastegate kind of right in this general area, like I was talking about earlier. And uh, I ordered some two inch stainless. And so I gotta cut me a little piece, come off of it something about like a in there i'm thinking just a straight so i actually already marked this then we could get these brand new garrett 50 millimeter waste gates these things are super clean and super nice too i think they're going to go right about like that and then i can wrap the exhaust back over and down i was thinking about going like this and then i could also shoot it back down under the car it's kind of do i want to get the exhaust out of the car or let it go under the car out of the car will keep everything a little bit cleaner this is pretty cool if it goes right here it could be a pretty short tie into like the exhaust right here. The only thing I was wondering is do I want the wastegate to feed in prior to the O2 sensor, but really, if the air fuel's 12.5 out of this, air fuel's 12.5 out of this, it shouldn't really matter. So it should mix and uh, not cause too many issues, but it's something I'm still trying to figure out in my head. But I think that's the way we're gonna look at it is kind of tucking the wastegates up right here. This side will get one right about here. Then luckily for the OCD, I think I can clock this top flange so then the Garrett looks similar. But then from the top of the car, they'll both kind of be looking at you just like that, which would be kind of cool. I think it'd be really, really clean. And uh, there's only so many places I can put this thing to prioritize it. But make sure whenever you're doing waste skates, you make sure you can prioritize it as much as possible. Ideally, I would be directly in that bend, but even up a little bit is not such a big deal. A little less ideal on this side actually just about perfect on this side because the the air is already starting to travel upward so it's almost perfectly prioritized within that bin so just whenever you're doing waste gates try to prioritize do everything you can to not go stick this thing at like a 90 to the airflow so it just shears past it and then it doesn't even matter so i mean it'll still do its job if your turbo system has a lot of back pressure it'll eventually work its way back and open up the gate but I'd rather not have my system work that hard and have to struggle with keeping the boost down because those puppies are gonna make some serious boost. So before when I drew my line, I just kind of held it up to the pipe and looked at the angle I wanted to come out at. And we're looking something like that, which I don't think is gonna be bad. It doesn't touch like at the top and the bottom, but like through the middles it touches, obviously. That's a little goofier there. But uh, I need to grind kind of the centers of each and then it copes around the pipe right here uh, it doesn't need much but it will need a little bit and the tighter you make this the better and then i'll probably tack this on draw a line around it bring it off the car remove the little gate and then cut the hole out for the uh you know to feed the waste gate and all that stuff but you have to keep in mind that there is a flange that comes off of this that takes up some distance so i'll get that all kind of assembled i'll cut it and then i'll slowly bring it down this kind of a uh like a three part, because the more you grind to cope this to fit, the thinner, the shorter and shorter this tube gets. Well, if I was running a tube this long, who cares? It'd end up somewhere in here. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible, but still be able to get the little flange on so then I can tuck the wastegate as close up to the pipe as possible. So also that does a few things. If you can keep it real tight, that's less leverage for the uh, wastegate to work and then try to crack around that you know that tube so uh, I'm gonna take a little bit little back and forth back and forth grind touch grind look uh, grind look grind look and see if we can get this thing to fit up and then I'll probably also take and cut this off uh, I don't know maybe a ex little extra long so I can kind of eyeball it but then so I mean it's hard because if you get it too short you, you pinch yourself into a corner so probably get this fit nice then cut it and then put my flanges on there and then if I need to shorten it to tuck it up a little bit better, I'll do that. So now hopefully you guys can see, that would have been the square cut. Now I have a little bit of a coat going on. Still need to work this side a little bit better into it. You can kind of see where it's starting to lay. 
which then you bring it over here and put it on the pipe. It's close. We still have some gaps, but it's not it's not way away, but it's not it's not as tight as I needed either. But I think I'm in the neighborhood. So now I want to put the wastegate on this thing so then I can keep actually just kind of grinding the position at exactly where I want on the tube. And then it also have enough clearance right here with the turbo. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure out kind of the distance here for the flanges. So with the wastegate, you get a bunch of flanges here. This one actually goes inside the bottom of the wastegate, because as you can see, nothing is sealing there. So then you install that. That allows the piston to seal against here. And then also you have two exhaust rings. So one is for the inlet side and one is for the outlet side of the wastegate. So then you set these on here and they have the little locating rings, really, really nice. And this one would be over here. You have that there. So then you have that. And then you also have two clamps for each side of it. So that's pretty much what you'll gain. So with that there, and then this here, you end up with that. And then the two inch pipe slides right into this. So pretty much that's the distance I need to be wary of and make sure that I have plenty of room to get this on as well as this flange around it without getting too tight to here. So as you guys can see, that's what I gotta make sure I'm out here a ways and make sure I got enough room for this flange to clear here. So let's go ahead and get it assembled, cut that down, kind of hold it together with some tape, see where we're at. Looking at this, I think I'm gonna be pretty good with maybe about a half inch of straight pipe off of it. And then welding the flange gains me the rest. And it'll pretty much sit somewhere about like that. So let's see what happens when I cut me a little piece. Hopefully I don't cut too short, but uh, leave me a little extra. You always cut it just a hair long too, because these actually have a receiver groove in it for the pipe, which is super nice, makes welding it so much better. So I think that's gonna land really, really good for prioritizing the wastegate. It's right about mm, there. The one problem is you guys should be able to see but down below my hand, there's a big old gap down there. So I gotta be able to notch this up here and cope it. It sits nice along the pipe right, right in there. But this side, I definitely need to do some work so then this can sit down around the pipe and then tighten up that bottom gap a little bit. And then, then we'll be getting pretty close, which by tightening up the bottom one, that should help the top one and so on and so forth. Let's see if we can make this work. Got a little tack on there, which it's pulling it up a little more than I like, but it gives you guys an idea. It's a little tight there, so I might try to try to favor it over just a little bit more, but otherwise it'll clear. It's there. The line of sight into the rest of the exhaust looks really, really good. So I think we're gonna go ahead and hang with that. I'm trying to decide the best route uh, to leave this like tacked, probably pull it off and scribe a little line in there and then peel it off, grind it, weld it, and then put it back in. And if it moves just a little bit, we should be okay as long as it doesn't get any tighter to here. So as long as whenever I'm welding everything, I make sure it actually gets tighter and more into the engine. Uh, I could actually shorten this up by a hair, but I kind of like the way it's looking and everything's fitting pretty decent. This side is up next. So I'll kind of try to do what I did there over here. And uh, we have a little bit more room since the intercooler has this on this side, and then it's down here on this side. So we gain a little bit more room in this area. So this side, again, should be easier, just like the cold side was. Now it's party, got everybody here. This one's now done too. We tried to match the angle to the dangle, but you know, it'll work out the way it works out. Marked everything out. And now we're working on putting the Maven mounts on here. So got them bolted to each of the turbos. And I think I'm gonna try to come off of this bar the little bar that comes straight over there and tie into it. So let's see how this works out. Found some molly and this is actually the bigger size for the two sizes that the Maven takes. Kind of see right there what, what we're looking at. So I'm actually thinking if I match close to the angle of like what I did right there and I come off of this at just a little bit of an angle like that and then bend into it like that, we're going to be dialed. So as you guys see, getting a good little bend in here. That's about 45 degrees. We're kind of looking at it, kind of setting it in there and rolling it up. But now you can see I'm long on the bend. So I'm gonna start cutting some off of this end of it. And then try to get that bend to hit right in the middle of the tube. All right, what's next? <laughs> All right guys, so 
I got the other mount built. It's pretty close to the other one, so both mounts are in. Good to go. Now I think it's time to disassemble the whole front end, pull it all off, and weld it all up. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Well, I'm gonna part one of the turbo build. Not just kidding. We just went ahead and disassembled everything. Took a few minutes, no big deal. And uh, now we're good to go. We were actually able to get the turbos out without removing the header or any of that. So that's really nice to, if you ever gotta grab a turbo and pull it out. And then this guy over here. Oh, yep. How we doing? So both the headers are over here. And we got a whole lot of welding to do on a whole lot of things. I gotta cut this out and all that stuff. But uh, I think that's gonna be it for part three, I believe it is, of the turbo build. If you guys wanna see us finish this thing up, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like it if you haven't. And we'll see you guys in the next video.